<laughs> right, here he comes. <laughs> So today we've come to a pretty awesome place uh, with the aim of getting photographs of the fastest animal on the planet. It all started when a customer came into the shop that I work at and I was teaching them how to use a camera and they said um, that I wouldn't be able to photograph Henry, I believe his name was. And they told me it was their peregrine. So I said, actually, I'd love to give that a go. So now we've come here to try and get some decent photos. Uh, Tony, just want to introduce yourself with your name and, and I guess, Falconer profession, right? Right, I'm Tony Bryant, we're at the care of Falconry. Uh, we do talks, displays, handling sessions, and the normal sort of falconry practices. I started flying birds about 26 years ago. I've been doing it commercially, starting off at local shows and slowly building it up to a full-time living um, for 20 years. Tony was clearly a man with a lot of experience and a lot of passion for what he does. He had a good collection of beautifully healthy birds, including a lot of native species, which myself and Ben, my camera operator for the day, were particularly chuffed to see. The first part of the day was brilliant. We got a chance to get up close and personal with birds that we would usually only see at a distance. I didn't really get any photos I was particularly chuffed with though, other than a couple of nice portraits of the Kestrel and Harris Hawk on the ground. So photographing birds like the Harris Hawk as it caught food in mid-flight was definitely a great way to warm up, ready for the faster birds later on. Speaking of which, we plan to leave the Peregrine Falcon, which, when stooping, can reach speeds of over 200 miles per hour, until last, and slowly build up to it. However, it wasn't long until we found ourselves getting ready to photograph the penultimate species and the second fastest bird that Tony had, the Lanner Falcon. A bird which is able to generate an impressive 90 miles per hour just in horizontal flight, and that wouldn't be easy to film or photograph to say the least. I love that call. I've heard that so many times in the wild. It's actually from the Lana Falcon, but it sounds exactly like a peregrine. Mm. He'll shout at me. So what you're saying is, he's saying is the the Lana Falcon was calling to him just as it would to its parents for food, um, but in the wild the parents would kick it out at a certain certain age and to fend for itself, but of course, if you're a falconer, you never kick it out, so it would just carry on calling to you for food, just like it would to the parents. Now, we're back on the main aim of the day, where we're gonna try and eventually photograph a peregrine in flight at speed. Um, first of all, though, we've got the Lanner Falcon, which is the closest thing to it. We've moved into a bigger field, as you can see. Um, apparently, there's a lot of banking um, done in this field with those faster birds, so it's gonna be a case of trial and error with the Lanner to sort of get lines in, work out, how the birds fly here before we move on to the final, final challenge, the absolutely awesome peregrine falcon. So this was it, the first test. I set up about 50 meters back from where Tony would be flying the Lana falcon. Meanwhile, Ben was trying to get footage of it at roughly the same distance, but off to the side. We were about as prepared as you could be, but from the moment it took off, we realized that may not be enough. The Lana Falcon's extreme acceleration, agility and flat out top speed proved to be a serious challenge. Our one blessing was that we knew it would be coming past Tony at some point which enabled us to pick up a slight rhythm and pattern to its flight. If we locked onto it as it banked where it was moving slower and then followed it as it swooped past Tony, we found we could get the odd clip and the odd photo. Straps adjusters we put under the thumb 
So we've got control of the bird, having somebody under the thumb, having control. Bird's on its perch, it tries to fly away, it comes to the end of its tether. Nowadays, lose your temper. What were you saying the other term is? Hoodwinked? Hoodwinked. Puts the bird in the dark to keep it calm. So we've hoodwinked the bird to think in its night time. Ah, oh, see? All these, okay. all these famous like British phrases, a lot of them come from, obviously, historic practices, like falconry. So like you were saying, hoodwinked. Um, end of your tether and mantelpiece we were just talking about. Yeah, the mantle. The mm -hmm. bird's mantling over its food. There you go. Awesome. awesome. Good boy. It's now or never. Can we get the shot of a peregrine at near enough top speed? Percy, is it? Henry Percy. Henry Percy. We, so call, was him, right, we call him Percy, but uh, Henry Percy. Okay, there Duke you go. of Northumberland. So are you going to stay here with the camera I'm gonna or stay come here. down with me? I'm going to stay here first to get all right. photos. What, what we'll right? do then is we'll re uh, bait up the lure mm -hmm. and then you can come down with me yeah, for the and, second flight. Yeah, and, and have a. Yeah, so awesome. we won't, probably won't fly him as long as we did the lanner okay. because we don't want to tire him out if we're going to do a second go. Okay, cool. Uh, so we've got a very small window of opportunity to get a shot. But what he does, you see, mm -hmm. is instead of going out and drifting around mm -hmm. and relatively resting when he's flying, he's flat out all the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he okay. doesn't take a break. Okay. okay. Thanks. Okay. Cheers for the heads up. Right, we'll, uh, we'll have to be on it. <laughs> right, so I'm a little bit nervous again, now. Because... This one might go and land on one of these roofs. Okay. But we'll get it down and go in again. Awesome. So I was just saying I'm a little bit nervous because we've got a shorter window to photograph it. It's a bit okay. Okay. You ready, Ben? So we got what we came for, sharp photos of the fastest animal on the planet. Okay, they could have been better artistically, perhaps more creatively lit or composed, but to be honest, I was now busy thinking about something else. Tony had just offered to fly the Peregrine Falcon past me at speed, less than a few centimetres away. My only instructions were not to move, keep my arms in and to trust the bird, which is easier said than done. That is... You're never going to get closer to a flyer than Peregrine. You might get as close, but you're not going to get closer. And the good thing is, I didn't walk on your... <sighs> that was... That... I'm actually speechless. That is just the most incredible animal I've ever come across. Spending time around birds of prey that I grew up searching for just a glimpse of in the wild was an incredible experience. Being up close with these amazing predators really gives you an appreciation for just how finely tuned evolution has made them. Though all this was filmed over a year ago, I hadn't uploaded it because I felt like the video was missing something and I just couldn't put my finger on it. 
That was until last week when a friend of mine told me about a location where he'd been filming a juvenile peregrine that had just fledged. Of course, that meant I had to check it out for myself. And on that note, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking on that bell icon to make sure you don't miss part two. Special thank you to Tony, of course, and to Ben for filming it all. And as always, a massive thank you to my patrons for supporting these videos and helping to make them possible. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you next time. Just keeping an eye on it in case it... It's coming this way.